Hello everyone, this is TechOS, and today I'm going to be going through Adobe Photoshop Express on the iPad. So this app retails for free on the App Store, and you can use in-app purchases to add extra features, however I haven't done this. So you will notice in the video a few sort of padlocks that will be indicating that I haven't yet upgraded. So if I open this, as you can see I've got an image here that I was editing earlier. I'm going to edit this image again. So I'm just going to go back and it's going to ask me if I want to save it. I'm just not going to save it for now. And when you first go into the app, you will come up with this sort of interface here, and which shows your photos. You can scroll through all your various photos. Also, I'd blurred them out on the video because obviously I've got personal photos in there. But I'm just going to go ahead and tap on the photo I would like. And now I've got my editing interface so at the top a few buttons you might need to familiarize yourself with are the undo button, the redo button, the auto fix, off, auto fix, on or the other way around and you can compare it and I'll show you that fe compare feature later on in the video up here you've got share so you can save the camera roll, upload to Instagram, send it by iMessage or text you can upload it to Facebook, Twitter, send it to email Send it to Flickr, Tumblr, or Creative Cloud, or Revel, whatever those are. Um, you can also click Open With to open it with any other image editing app you have, or any app that will be able to open the image. That might be useful if you've finished using Photoshop to edit the, the photo, and you wish to use another editing app on your iPad that has perhaps a more advanced feature than what I'm going to show you today. So... Here we've got the image in the middle of the screen over here, and down here we've got looks, we've got premium looks and my looks. My looks you can sort of add your own looks once you've finished editing. You've got premium looks which obviously you need to buy, so if I tap this icon down here, the little shopping icon, you will ask you to pay obviously. I'll just hit cancel for now. And you've got normal looks that you don't have to pay for. So here you've got various looks, you've got normal, vibrant, and all the other looks. You notice here that there's a little slider that I can use to change the effect, so I can change the vibrancy and all that sort of stuff. So I'm just going to undo that. I'm going to go to summer and make it sort of like that. Yeah. Down here I've got my crop button. So if I click down at the bottom where we've got these six buttons, click the crop button I can just crop it so I'm just going to crop the image there I can rotate it clockwise and anti-clockwise I can flip it so along both sides I can choose how I want the image to be the crop to be whether I want it to be constrained or unconstrained so at the moment I've got it unconstrained however if I go back into that I can just constrain it to the device resolution so that will make it in this case 2048 by 1536 which is the resolution of my iPad I'm using an iPad Air 2 so that's the resolution of that I think iPad Air also used the same resolution and obviously older generations I know the iPad 2 from quite a while ago now uses a resolution of I think, 1024 by 768 obviously you have to check into that for your own device and it will scale it to the correct size for your device and you've got various other um, constrain constrainments if that's what I can call them and also you've got square which is quite a popular one down here I can change other effects so if I click here um, I can change the clarity I can sharpen the image so as you can see it zooms in and out you can zoom in even more if you would like to then you can just change the clarity just make it have the image a different feel and you've got all the various other options down here. It's just the standards you get with most image editing apps. And as you can see, these two here are premium ones, so I won't be able to use them at the moment. I can do that. However, when I come to save my image, it will not let me use those. Um, down here, we've got red eye removal, so it will detect red eyes and remove them, or you can just tap on them manually if you'd like. And you can choose between people and pets down here. So, if you need more precision with your editing, here we've got borders. So, we can add various borders. As you can see I'm just clicking through the various ones. And 
that's quite a nice feature. I'm just going to keep it on the normal for now. Here we've also got edges. We can add various edges, like a film sort of view, half tone. You see sort of those sort of things. And you've got other frames, so I can add a matte version, a modern version, a wood version, dark wood, modern matte, all kinds of other edges and things. I'm just going to keep it on normal with no frame, edge, frame or edge. Here I can click on this and it will remove blemishes. So if I just zoom in here, if this was say a blemish, the top of this tree on the the top of the tall tree on the left, I could just tap it. And as you can see, it's now sort of attempted to redo this blemish to make it look better. I'm just going to undo that for now. And that's basically what as far as it goes with in terms of editing features. Um, I'm going to show you the compare feature now. So as you can see at the top, we have got the compare button that I showed you earlier. And if I tap on that, it will show me the original image that I imported into Photoshop. And if I tap it again, it will show me the edited image. So that's just a nice way of sort of looking back and seeing how you've improved it. And if there's anything else you'd like to do, then that's what you can also do. So that was a look at Adobe Photoshop Express on the iPad. Of course, if you've got any questions or comments, you can drop them below this video or you can also drop me an email. That will be at the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.